was thinking about how do we support leaders who want to lead this way? Because it, you know, as a generative leader, you're not providing a vision. <laughs> in fact, I think we've come to the conclusion that in a in a, a, a VUCA world, you know, a world that's volatile and certainly complex and ambiguous. You know, if you look at all these series of leadership, they're all about have a vision, and uh, that's a great way to get people to follow you, but. Probably in a, in a rapidly changing world, having a vision is actually a problem. It actually gets in the way of the the adaptive changes that need to sort of get generated from the bottom up in the system. And that's what a lot of dialogic OD processes do: is they create ways in which leaders can not supply the content of the change, but supply the process of the change, get the content to come from the stakeholders themselves so they're more committed and engaged in making the change happen. But that flies in the face of our current story about what a leader is. If a leader is someone who has a vision. And um, so we're working on helping leaders have a new story of leadership so that they can lead these sort of processes more effectively. Are there any um, key competencies that you would um, suggest for someone to really hone in on if they want to apply a dialogic OD? Well, I think in, in many regards, there are competencies um, that are part of all aspects of OD that are, that are involved in it. Uh, the, and to me, the most important competency is really the mindset, which is not about how I facilitate a group, but really as I'm working with a group, what, how I'm interpreting what they're saying, what I think my role is, how I'm choosing to operate that. But there are some competencies around the ability to create enough safety for people to be in engagements of interaction with people, the ability to create safe containers, to the ability to bring people of difference together to share different kinds of things, to learn how to accentuate uh, differences to lead to new stories, the ability to recognize or help generate generative images for what people are doing, the ability to support leaders in terms of their own anxieties and help them to understand that they have a role to embed things in the system to find out uh, the new ideas that emerge and how to support it and help them understand a different role for leadership as Jervis was beginning to talk about. So those are some kinds of competencies. And a lot of it is, I, I know for myself, and I, whether I'm the perfect dialogic uh, consultant or not, I draw on all that I learned in traditional OD competencies, but how I apply them and when I apply them and what I think I'm doing. And I think for me personally, it's much more of the competency around helping people to restory what they're doing or reframe what they're doing or reimagine what they're doing and step out of the way to see where that takes them because that has not transformed what's possible for them. And I don't have to hold their hand, I don't have to come up with a plan, I don't have to lay it out, I don't have to do anything. But the real thing happened when they uh, realized that they had been limiting themselves all along by an old story that somehow is new. And that was the real magic at that moment. And that's more when I'm in a coaching or a more what we would call dialogic process consulting as opposed to doing a staged intervention. That's more in terms of what I look for. Yeah. yeah, I'd amplify that. I think one of the core um, skills of the, someone with a dialogic mindset who's useful as a change consultant is that their ability to pay attention to the language that's being used and what's the language that's going to free people up and what are the images that are being used and what's the images that are going to free people up and when does a, a new generative image emerge and see it and go, oh my god, that's, that's what this group needs and find some way to, to bring it into the center of the conversation in a way that really impacts the group. And sometimes groups will do it on its own, and some, but a lot of times they need a little guidance around that. I think um, that's a skill set. I also think um, we've learned a bunch of stuff from um, uh, Barnett Pierce and, and Vic Cronin and the coordinated management of the meeting. Um, they had some interest, because you know, their stuff is all about how talking is action and how does talking create a social world and how, how do we kind of create a better social world. So um, uh, they, and Barnett, before he died, he kind of defined three skill sets and we've used this in our book, we found it useful. So there's a skill set around dialogic interactions. How do you how do you help people have better interactions from this framework? And then there's event design. How do you design events in ways that are going to be generative and, and lead to a new narrative emerging and that sort of thing? And then there's strategic architecture that is designing a sequence of events to start from one end uh, to the other. And uh, I 
it's a useful framework for taking it back to the competency. Just to add one more piece, which I'm sure the readers of the book or the people who want to practice this, um, that I don't always think about for whatever reasons. When I think of skill sets and competencies, I'm thinking about doing the work. But there's a whole set of skills and competencies of getting the work, yeah. of contracting, of yeah. being able to explain to a, a, a manager or a leader, here's what we're doing or why, and whatever else. And we're not about to shut our eyes and jump off the cliff. There really is a process and a logic and whatever else it is. And I understand what it is. And same thing as in traditional OD. At some level, trust me, trust the process. It's, but it's trusting a slightly different process that needs to be explained in a different way because it comes out of a slightly different paradigm, if you will, or whatever. And I, I would say stay tuned, everybody, because uh, we keep shifting and developing and learning more. Um, and as we do, it gives us, it opens another door into a window to be able to add some more stuff. So uh, maybe, maybe by the time that this book gets through the fifth edition, There'll be a whole lot more we can add to what Dialogic OD is. And other, other people talking about it, too. That's a commitment. You'll be in the fifth edition. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you so much for spending a couple minutes to talk with us. It was really nice to hear your perspective on Dialogic OD and um, your message is something that really resonates with uh, younger millennial generations such as myself. And uh, I look forward to, to hearing more. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was wonderful. It was clear. It was new. It's different. It's it's a fresh. It's fresh. Yeah. Thanks.